Hey everybody, it's February 21st and you're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. Uh, just a reminder, this is part of Chaos, so you are under the Chaos Code of Conduct. So thank you for respecting that. And also, we don't care if you have your cameras on or off, that's totally fine. You're welcome to participate in the chat to the side if you like, instead of speaking through the microphone, totally fine. We're, we're pretty easy here, we're pretty flexible. And just for anybody who's new, this meeting is for the chaos community to come together and chat about things that are relevant to the community. We do announcements, we hang out for a minute and say hello to each other. Um, so it's pretty chill, but we do have an agenda, which I will pull up here. Um, and I see pictures of kitties, oh my. So if you want to tell us what wakes you up in the morning, if it be an alarm clock, babies or pets, or maybe just the sunshine, trains, motorcycles, roosters, whatever else, we would love to hear that. I would love to hear that anyway. In my old house, there was a, a dude who had a Harley and he left at 7 a.m. every morning for work. And it was extreme, <laughs> extremely loud. And the whole neighborhood knew when he was leaving for work. <laughs> That's what I was so, going to say. <laughs> yeah. It's not my pleasant. neighbors wake me up yeah yeah so i'm glad i'm out here in the country now i don't have anything to wake me up except for animals or sunshine in my alarm sometimes but all right i love your kitty sophia so happy what's your kitty's name his name is moby but he just gets very sad when we're not awake when he is so this morning it was 6 a.m um <laughs> we try um thankfully it was at least when the sun is rising but sometimes before <laughs> it's too early oh man it's too early <laughs> well it's and like it, he's like cat not a child so we can always just like lock him in the other room if it gets bad but yeah he's a cat not a child i love that <laughs> i mean you can do that with kids too they'll you know they'll be all right <laughs> We, we did do that on Christmas morning with our kids at some point when they got old enough, it was like eight o'clock. No, no, not before eight o'clock. Like that's the thing. So they would just sit and stare at the clock until it turned eight. And it was like, all right, it's free for all now. But yeah, <laughs> man, I get it. All right, um, let's hop to it. So I just wanted to acknowledge Kingsley. I don't see Kingsley on the call today, but Kingsley wrote an amazing blog post for us. If you haven't read it, um you can do so right here it's how uh designers can contribute to open source projects on github it's a great article highly recommend you read it if you haven't already and um i wanted to also say if anybody does want to write for the blog we have a process now to do that and it's super easy all you need to do is just uh tell us <laughs> that you tell the uh working group um the communications working group that we are, uh, or that you are working on an article. We have a list of topics if you don't know what to write about, but you want to write about something. And um, then we'll review it and we will post it for you on your behalf once it's all edited and, and ready to go. And all you need to do is just put it in a Google Doc. So you don't have to know GitHub, you don't have to know anything. It does help if you know the chaos community somewhat. So um, for newcomers, we do kind of recommend that you, you know, attend this meeting, kind of get to know chaos a little bit before you jump right in, but we would love to, to see your articles. So and we do have a list of topics. Like I said, if you're curious, we can point you to that. Any questions about this? I think the new process is great. Yeah, we just want to make it easy as possible and at the communications working group yesterday we did um venya had a really a few great ideas um for instance we don't show like the author's picture or a bio or anything like that so we're going to look into maybe including that somehow on our blog template um and i think i forget what the other thing was yeah i'm not sure but could we, could we just do that in the google doc like if, yeah. if I wrote a blog post, I would just add a picture of myself yeah. and a small bio and okay. That was it. Yeah. A blog template is what she recommended too. So that someone could I just see. see that template. Yep. So, um, so yeah, so we're iterating on that process. We'll keep getting better at it, but hopefully we, we just want to make it as low barrier as possible for people to contribute in that way. 
So, all right. Um, wanted to let you all know about a few working group meeting changes. Uh, the web content meetings are no more. Yay, we took we actually took a meeting off the chaos calendar. Can you all stand it? Oh my gosh. Um, we are switching to async only because most of the website changes have been done. Um, the new uh, knowledge base is up, the new um, redesign is all done. So, you know, we don't really need to meet every week or every two weeks. Um, so we're just switching to async. If you want to contribute to the website, you certainly can do that if there's, I don't know if there is anything, but if there is something, feel free to join us in the, the um, website and uh, Slack channel and it's wg-website. So you can find us there. Um, there's also a thread on Discourse. If you have feedback about the site, um, there's a thread called Site Feedback. <laughs> That's creative, right? Um, it's for website uh, feedback and also discourse feedback. If there's something you don't understand or something's broken or you have a recommendation for something better, feel free to plop it in there as well. Or you can put an issue, but we're trying to kind of uh, point everybody to the discourse thread for those. Um, the second change is that the metrics model working group is switching about a 12 hour, almost a 12 hour difference than what we were doing. So that's a big change um, just to make it a little bit easier for folks to attend that meeting. Um, it does make it a little trickier for our Pacific Coast folks to join. It's pretty early in the morning, um, but it makes it easier for our Asia Pacific group to join. So, and uh, Europe and India, like all of those people in between. So we're hoping that that works. We're just trying it uh, for now. We'll see, we may have to change it again. We don't know, but it's, cause everything's an experiment here, you know? So just wanna let everybody know that. And yeah, you can join Don, that's great. <laughs> Yay, Europe, <laughs> Europeans. I, I was super excited to see that, very excited. I mean, really what it came down to is we had, um, both groups, those that were in like China and those were in the US, I think it was a suboptimal time for both of us. <laughs> you just realized that we could flip it 12 hours and it would become more optimal for all of us. So it was a pretty easy change for the folks that attend that meeting. Nice. I mean, this is really early for your you central folks. I'm all, I'm, that's totally fine. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually, that's, <laughs> For me, that's way better than um, six o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah, it's a little rough. All right, any questions or anything else to comment about that change? Um, maybe the one other, I think you have mentioned it, right? Is that the Asia Pacific call is really just now very, um, friendly for folks in Asia Pacific and the Asia Pacific region. So it's changed. So most of us in the US really just can't join at all, which is fine. I have no problem with that, but that's also changed. I think you've mentioned that in the past. We yeah. have, but we can mention it again. Um, yeah, those meetings happen once a month now and they're aligned with the to-do group Asia, uh, Asia Pacific. And I think they happen at like 1 a.m. US Central, something like that, so. Yeah, but they are open to whoever. You don't have to just be in Asia Pacific area. If you're in Europe and you want to join, that's totally fine. Those um, meetings are in English. I, I did double check that. And the minutes are in English. Their so minutes are in Google Doc and all of that. So um, yeah, if that's something that's interesting to you and it fits your schedule, have at it. That's well, like 11 p.m. you said? It's like 1 a.m. your time. Yeah. 1 a.m. Oh, 1 a.m. Well, yeah, I'm often up at 1 a.m. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm in bed at like 9 p.m. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. So um, any other questions about meeting changes? Again, you know, I just want to remind everybody, you can subscribe to the chaos calendar because these meetings do change sometimes. So the your best bet is to subscribe to the calendar, which is on our website. All right. No other questions and we'll go on. Um, uh, so the next one is actually, I was just thinking of another question I had, so I'll, I'll add that to the agenda in a minute. Um, we are adding the static URLs to each metric eventually. So for those who have missed this conversation, we are, um, we are maintaining, uh, so WordPress assigns a page ID to every page and that's like a page that doesn't change. 
Um, what happens for those who don't know, sometimes when we reference our metrics by name in the URL, it uh, we change the name of the metric and then things get broken and janky. So um, what we're gonna do is add a, a line at the bottom of every metric that says, if you're referencing this metric, please use this URL and it will just be like chaos.community slash P equals one, two, three, four or whatever. So it won't be, um, you know, obvious what that link is, but that link will never change regardless of what the name of the metric ends up being. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I think for Grimoire Lab and Augur and for other tooling, it's extremely helpful because then we can link link those def definitions to our metrics and people can learn more about what the metric really represents. And, and it's, I think that's just fantastic. And I'm so happy about that. I, I do have one question. Um, I was I went with the risk working group uh, last week. Um, we were trying to, I, I wasn't sure where to look for the static URL. So those we were gonna, that was one of the things we were going to do. We were going to add them. And then I realized I didn't know where to go look for them. Do I, do I just go to the metric page, it sounds like, and it's there? It, eventually, it will be there. I don't think okay. they're added on all of them yet. Um, so there is a column in the spreadsheet, in the metric spreadsheet now. Yeah, but it's not. We have One of our jobs was to fill it out for risk. And do I just log in as admin to find them? Uh, um, I can. To WordPress? Yeah, I wrote a script that pulls them all out, so we have all of those page IDs. I oh, that's, the, right. I, that's right. I remember. You, I remember you think did risk, that. risk doesn't have to do anything. I don't think. Okay, maybe if someone just can point me to where that output is, I pro I'm sure you've told me before, but it escaped my brain. It's probably it, in the issue. I don't remember where I put it. It's in Slack. I can point it, point it to you, uh, or send it to you, Sean, after this meeting, because cool. I have it open. Um, cool. Yeah, and, and I think Kevin is going to be populating that page ID part, as that was my understanding anyway. I okay. I mean, I'm happy to do it for risk. Matt, Matt and I talked about that I would take care of that. And okay. so I'm, I'm happy to do that because I know Kevin's done so much, <laughs> so much web stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he would mind somebody else doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. If you wouldn't fight me over it, I don't think. Let me just add a little action item here for me so I don't forget to send that to you. Yeah, it won't happen until, you know, later today because sure. oh, I, yeah, yeah. I have meetings and teaching and all that fun stuff yeah, going on. Uh, we, are, we are also going to use those URLs for linking from the metrics models. When we include the different metrics that are included in the model, we will link then to that static URL. So those also don't get broken as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Any questions about any of that? Just one. There was an and I put in there. We're also going to provide a link to the metric on GitHub so that if people would like to make a change to the metric, they know where to find it on GitHub. Yes. So quick question about that. I have noticed that this, the website has gone through a few iterations, but the GitHub doesn't always get updated in a way that I have noticed that some metrics described on GitHub are no longer consistently represented on the website. Um, so that might, like if so, there if there are double leaks, maybe I'm just thinking about risk. And Sean, maybe this is an action item for us to, to clean this up a bit. So there's the same information in both places, but I did notice that our GitHub page was a bit out of date for that working group. All right, I will add that to our agenda for the next I will add that to our agenda of ta yeah. a task list. And I may, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. So Matt, Matt, I'm generally in support of it. I just, mm -hmm. it might call out where we haven't been doing our house cleaning uh, for some groups. I, that's totally cool. I, I thought the metrics that came off of GitHub were the ones that were on the web page. Yeah, the web page, yeah, the web page pulls from GitHub for the individual metrics. What it doesn't pull is the working groups readme that doesn't exist anywhere, I don't think. I don't think. I could be wrong on that. Um, so maybe so that's, that that's the thing I'm about? thinking of. Yeah, that was okay. really out of date. Um, 
but the metrics, so the metrics are fine. So that, that's not the issue then, sorry. It's the readme. So that might throw people off because I think like the meeting time is wrong. The description is out of date. So I think maybe we should just take that. And sorry, I'm, we're now having a mini risk meeting right now. No, I know it's like that. Uh, two, uh, two things and, below. I think we do and, need to go through the website and the readmes to make sure our communication channels and times are represented. And, and I guess one other thing that since we're on risk, um, I'll just mention that sometimes we don't record the meetings and the reason we don't record them sometimes is because we're discussing things related to um, the software supply chain security and people are sharing information that's not public yet. And <clears throat> so we do take active notes of the things that can be shared. So there are notes from in the in the most in the most recent meeting, there are notes, but we didn't record it. And we didn't do that on purpose because some of the information that we discussed isn't public yet. And we're talking national security type stuff where you just can't can't record that yet. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, and thank you for just explicitly calling that out and clarifying. Um, but yeah, I think that's absolutely fair. Yeah, it doesn't happen that often, but sometimes it does, depending who's there. Yeah, makes sense. Um, uh, one other question I had about the website stuff, and maybe this is a question for um, Kevin, um, but I was noticing um, that, or I was thinking about the community side of the knowledge base, knowledgeable knowledge base. Um, and if the metric side of the knowledge base is only pulling from those keywords, well, wouldn't it make sense that the community side of the knowledge base also will only pull, pull from keywords? We don't have any keywords or any anything in the community knowledge base. We don't have any of those set up. So do we need to do that? I think we do. So like, what would be an example? Like so for one instance, of the handbook pages or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if okay. you go to the community knowledge base, I'll just show you an example right here. Um, because I found this this morning when I was on the office hours. And it made me think about it. So if I go to the knowledge base and I search for for more lab, I get that. That's the only thing that comes up. And so, like, that's not great. Because <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure we mentioned Grimoire Lab in a few other places in the community I, I, knowledge base. I can't remember where. But I think it was the web meeting where we discussed this, that the, the metric search and the regular search, like the metric search is excellent for finding metrics and the regular search is not. So it maybe there's something that we need to do to optimize how it's scanning our site for search terms on the regular search. Well, this is part of its own knowledge base. So oh, this the knowledge the base, same, so the yeah. knowledge base search is a third search that we have. No, yeah, we have three. So okay. right, this is what we're just playing with right now. So you have a metrics models search because that just looks at that. You have the knowledge base in the community, which is our handbook. That's just that. And then this would be the rest of the site. But Kevin and I are kind of messing with the global search kind of thing. So this okay. is not this is temporary. Just okay. want to make that clear. The, so, the three but, searches are temporary or the what's No, yeah, we're going to maybe like lump them all into one. I don't no. know. Kevin and I are kind of working through that. It, that's a process. I'm, I'm sure there's different plugins, different. Yeah, I'm sure that's a process. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. So anyway, my question was like, if we go over here to metrics, um, and again, maybe this is a. So you know, like it will pull from the platform. You know what I mean? Like it'll search on that word, and it'll also search on whatever keywords we put in these metrics. Mm -hmm. But we don't have keywords in the community knowledge base stuff. So my question to the group was, do we need that? And I think we do. And I, I, is there um, like a level of account access that could be granted so that we could collectively go through? I guess one question is, do we want to just have a group of people volunteer to log in and add keywords? Or do we want to discuss what keywords for which things in some way? I mean, I think, it, you know, we could probably just add them in mm -hmm. a document, you know, whoever wants to work on documentation for that. Um, could we, it doesn't, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I agree. That's, I think it's a totally good idea. 
I'd like to finish out the metrics first and the metrics models. It seems like we don't have that quite done yet, like with the keywords and the context tags. Mm -hmm. Like, so maybe we could finish out the metrics so that we have the static URL listed and the link to the GitHub page listed. And we have like ensured the context tags and keywords are there for metrics and metrics models, like done. And then we could add keywords to the, for example, the handbook pages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Kevin's actively working on, at least that's what he indicated to me that he's actively working on the metrics. So yeah, yeah totally fine. We can wait. Okay. I mean, the wait might be like a week or two. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's yeah. totally fine. I mean, we've gone this whole time without them. I think, you know, yeah. <laughs> for week, it doesn't really matter. It's fine. It's not something super urgent. It's just something that I noticed today. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. We don't have keywords. And so I don't think the search searches the whole text is, was the whole point right. of that. And that's a limitation on Minerva plugin that we're using for WordPress. It okay. does not search through the whole text. Gotcha. So that's that was the whole problem we had on the metric side as well. So, yeah, that's hence the need for keywords. For anyone who's wondering what that is. Okay, sorry um, to go off on those little tangents there, but um, next up is the tour guides. Yay, yay. I meant to mention this in our Slack channel, um, but I didn't. So <laughs> I'm mentioning it here. Um, Mary Blessing is not on the call today, but um, Chaos Hi, is here. Oh, is she? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Is it's hard to tell. When oh, you're sharing on. your screen, it's hard to tell. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Mary Blessing is going to be leading this group of chaotix. Um, for those who don't know, this is something we've um, is relatively new. We're just starting it out. The tour guides are going to be a group of volunteers that have been in the chaos community for a while who are going to help newcomers uh, find their way more of like a one on one um, kind of situation. So Mary Blessing is going to take this initiative and um, help build it out. She's going to be the one to coordinate everybody. Um, those who have already expressed interest in this, we do have a Slack channel that we're all in. So um, Mary Blessing will be taking that and, and documenting everything for us and really getting that going. So yay! Congratulations to Mary Blessing for taking this on. She has been absolutely outstanding at welcoming newcomers. She has been super helpful to those who are new to the community. So I'm really happy that she's taking this on and has agreed to um, kind of run with this. So, yay. Thank you, Mary. Blessing. You are awesome. Um, okay. The next thing on the, I, I should say, does anybody have questions about this tour guides? It's new, I know. We'll be talking about it more in the next upcoming weeks. Yeah, I think just my only comment, and I, we've talked about this before, is like how many people might be interested <laughs> in having a tour guide, but just managing that, that's all. Yeah, and um, Ruth and Mary Blessing and I met yesterday um, to, to kind of just talk about everything. And one idea that Ruth had, which I think is excellent, because of course it came from Ruth, so all her ideas are excellent, but um, she was saying like maybe in the onboarding call, we could mention the tour guides that way so that at least we know folks have taken that step well, to, you know come to this yep. whole onboarding thing and then reach out and so that might be a way to kind of manage that level like you were talking about yeah i like that if anybody has any other ideas or comments anything about the tour guides or wants to get involved or learn more you can reach out to mary blessing or ruth and i but also a merry blessing too. And let's see. Okay, so the next thing on our list is this. I don't know if DEI is the right place, but I, we do, this is to Sophia's point. So we do need to go through the readmes that are with the respective working groups. We need to go through even like the participate page right now, just because like, for example, we made a change to the metrics model working group, like that little tile needs to be updated as well. I think the Asia Pacific call needs to be updated as well. So just, we just need to, I don't think it's a huge task, but just go through and identify 
Um, in, in DEI, the only reason I mentioned DEI is because there is an issue open right now that like one of the things in the readme is it says, please join the DEI mailing list, which does not exist anymore. So we just need to get those things cleared up. Yeah, agreed. Do we, uh, I don't want to be too process heavy, but is there something, I think that, um, so there is also an, an open issue in the community repo, I believe, about this kind of thing that would somebody, uh, I think Shoya and Ruth had come up with this idea about, um, let me find the community here, about having a bot that would uh, open issues in the respective working groups to help them remember to check. So the bot would open tickets or issues in their working group so that um, the working group would see it as an issue and then be like, oh yeah, we should go check our readme. We should go check our web, uh, the, the things that we are representing on the website to make sure that it's you know, accurate. Would you think that would be helpful in this case? I mean, like that, it seems to speak to what you're talking about, Matt. Is the, yeah. the spot doesn't exist, does it? It does not. Uh, we're looking for somebody who wants to write it. <laughs> would be great. <laughs> so idea. yes, because then I'm guessing we could just kind of feed the bot, so to speak, um, like requests that would go out to open issues. So if, for example, we knew that we needed to update the readmes, we would type that somewhere and the bot would create an issue that the idea no, it's the opposite. Oh. The bot would open an issue that just says, hey, working group, go check your stuff for any changes you may, might have made. And so like the idea is that in working groups, you're looking at the open issues in the group. Somebody's looking at the open issues. I so see. Somebody would see that issue and be like, oh yeah, hey, we should go check and make sure everything's accurate about our working group. And then you all would make the change or make some kind of indication that there's a change and then it would magically happen. <laughs> what, would, what, what would I think I missed? What would trigger the bot to create the issue? I think it's a good idea. I just time. I think it would just be like, time. oh, it's yeah, two weeks okay. or a month or whatever. The time would yeah. be. Okay. I think that was the no, idea. Yeah, no, that makes uh, that's okay. I just wanted to understand that that make. I think that makes sense. It it, it gives us a, a kind of you know we can use issues as uh, ways to assign ourselves to do things and close them. So I like the idea, maybe in the interim, we just ask the DEI working group to go look at our own README risk. Y'all can do the same as mm -hmm. maybe put it on your agenda for the next time. You know, alternatively, we could do something in Slack also. Like that would be pretty easy to do is just have Slack remind the channel every month. Hey, go check your yeah. README for any changes. I, that might be easy. I like I like the issue better because okay. then there's a place I can go to and I don't have to scroll through Slack. Gotcha. But that's my preference. I'm I may be not right about mm -hmm. that. There was I also may not be it right. But <laughs> was there did have we followed up? It looks like there was a person interested in the in this. Um, yes, I don't know that that person has okay. well, spoken back up. Maybe perhaps because it was tied to GSOC. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we said it might be. I know, so, right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, yeah, we can. Okay. Poke around with that again. I mean, we could always, we should maybe also just let's put this out to the list again. In Slack. I mean, if somebody's interested, that'd be great. Interested in building the bot. Yeah. 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 Even if it's not part of a mentorship program. Add the bot issue. Okay. Cool. I can see that. There we go. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, we are going to leave space today for this chaos con meeting.
um, for those who are helping to plan the, the next CASCON. So I think we're all done. Any, any last minute comments or anything from the community? Questions? All good. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. So for those who are not on the planning committee, you are free to go and enjoy the rest of your day. And Sophia says, feed the bot. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna stick with her. <laughs> Wonder what a bot would eat. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think we're good. So see y'all later. If you're on chaos Comp planning committee, stick around for more fun. And then Matt, if you wanna stop recording, whatever, you did.